Hello and welcome to the Animation Industry Podcast. My name is Terry, as it always is, and I just got back from a super nice trip all through Japan. This week I'm chatting with Hannah Daigle, the creator of one of the most popular web series to ever grace Newgrounds and YouTube, Say Tina. In our chat, Hannah is going to share how she created Say Tina while she was still studying animation and then used Twitter to vet how popular it would be and then made a bet and formed a studio to help bring it to life. She's also going to share everything it takes to make a YouTube series, the best sources of income for a YouTube series, and how she used her YouTube experience to get hired for TV. But first, this episode is sponsored by CalArts Extended Studies, who are taking students for their portfolio development workshops right now. These workshops help students build their college application portfolios and are developed with the same artistic flavor and integrity as the curricular courses at CalArts and are taught by faculty, alumnex, and industry professionals. They are offered three times a year and anyone 14 or older can sign up. And what's great about them is that they're online to be flexible with your schedule. Now what's more is CalArts is offering 10% off to the first 30 students who enroll using code AIP. So if you've been dreaming about going to CalArts and want to absolutely nail your entrance portfolio by taking these workshops, simply go to ext.calarts.edu to learn more and also make sure you sign up for their mailing list to be reminded of their deadlines. I've included a link to this in the description of this chat, so please go check that out. And now without further ado, let's jump in. Hello, hey. Hannah. How are you? Hello. I'm very good. How are you? Are you sure you're very good? Because you told me you're cold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, besides being cold, I mean, it, being cold isn't a big deal in the grand scheme of things. I have I have like 50 blankets to keep me warm, so I'm, I'd say I'm doing pretty great. You have 50, 50 blankets? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I haven't counted, but that seems like the amount of blankets that I have yet. Wow. Okay. Well, um, you know, I'm excited yeah. to chat because I've known about your work for quite some time. And also yeah. you, I would consider you like, there's a lot of like, how do I say this? Like independent YouTube series out there. And you're one of the more, I would say like popular popular ones is that does that make sense oh is that is that, is that right I don't, like there, there's I don't know. there's like not and there's not many that like reach the amount of views that i think that you've been able to get i think yeah yeah it's it's really crazy like i i still haven't really conceptualized or like processed the the amount of people that have seen satina like i think i think episode one is at like 15 million views or something and to me that's just like it's it's too many numbers for my brain to be able to handle so i'm just like oh yeah no i just have you ever been that. out somewhere <laughs> somebody is just talking about it and you're like ha 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh um i don't encounter that very much but um but you have it does it does come up sometimes not not like like whenever I meet people um, and I tell them about what I do, some of them are like, oh my God, I've watched that. Or like, I've seen that on YouTube. Um, especially when I go to like conventions or something and I I, uh, I table, um, people come up to me and they're like, wait a minute, you're 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 the creator of CT. I've seen that on YouTube. And like the sheer amount of people that that recognize me and, and tell me that is like mind boggling. Like I'm still not, <laughs> I still don't even like conceptualize it. It's It's crazy. But yeah, a lot of people have seen it and I guess a lot of people like it. So it's, it's, that's really cool. I mean, that is super cool. Okay. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, I've been recognized like a couple of times for something that I've done, but it's not to the extent of what you've made at all. But when somebody's <laughs> like, oh my God, it's you and you went and, and, and like, <laughs> I just don't know how to react <laughs> all. Like, what do you, yeah. you other than just like, I just like kind of bashfully be like, yeah, cool. How, how are you? <laughs> uh yeah I, I try to be really grateful and be like oh my gosh that's so cool thank you for watching you know um because people really appreciate that when you when you say stuff like that um and i and i really do appreciate like people watching and appreciating my stuff um so i try to i try to make that as clear as possible and like let people know that like i like without without them i wouldn't be anywhere and like you know it's it's all about it's all about people like watching and enjoying it and like spreading it to their friends and stuff that's that's yeah. how that's how things get around so yeah <laughs> I, that makes total sense just be appreciated so i, I want to hear yeah how i mean i kind of know the gist of the story like you were in school and you mm. created this concept and then you posted some work and people 
people went crazy for it. They lit <laughs> there's all my money if you make this into a show and then you became rich and famous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. I'm a I, I have a I have like a Scrooge McDuck like money pool that I that I dive into uh every day. I mean, why not? Like <laughs> Yeah. I was I was, <laughs> God, talking, I, wish. I was talking to one of my friends because like I used to be in the business world and like uh like I'm speaking at an animation conference for free. And then I was like, I was talking to one of my friends. They're like, yeah, we're, I always have to speak for free at these conferences. And I was like, in the business world, like if you speak, it's like 20, 30 K like down. Like, they, like you're not going to speak <laughs> unless, there's, unless there's a significant money behind it. So why yeah. can't you be rich like that? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, no, it's it's easier said than done. It's not like sometimes animation is, isn't a very lucrative uh, career path, but I it's very creatively fulfilling to me. So I I continue to do it. So, okay. So how did, how did this start? Because like, you know, it's, it's easy to look at this series and be like, well, yeah, there's really cool animators involved and voice actors and mm -hmm. timing. And, you know, it's a great idea, but like, obviously it started from somewhere. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so I, I can tell the entire story from scratch if you, Please. if you like, uh, just cause I, it's, I've told it so many times that I've like memorized it now, but, um, it's, it's, it's kind of funny how it all happened. Um, I was in my second year of uh, art school at uh, my my art college in in Massachusetts, and uh, I I was in my uh, second year animation class, and uh, my teacher uh, was like you know uh, recommended to us that we create like a character uh, that we could use in our assignments, so I kind of like. I was just like doodling one day and I doodled this little demon girl because she was like really fun to draw um, and she was like she had a very simple design so it would be easy to animate. Uh, I was like oh I really like drawing this little character and I, I was like conceptualizing like what I would do with her um, and I I was like kind of thinking of like ideas for my my final year film and I was like oh you know this this character is kind of cool like what's what I wonder what her backstory is like what was she you know um what if her what if her mom was the queen of hell and her father was a human being um like and i thought that was like a, a really fun dynamic and uh i wanted to do more with that so i posted i i started drawing um like concept art for that for that uh little story idea and one of the things that i drew got really popular on twitter um and it kind of like left twitter and you already, went have, to other a, websites. You already have a twitter following at this point yeah, I did. Uh, I had uh, I had a bit of like audience, like you know, I had a bit of an audience from like other stuff I've done online before. Like I had a I had a comic called Philinia on, that I made in high school, and I posted that on DeviantArt. It got kind of popular, not not Satana levels of popular, but it was pretty popular like in the community. Um, so I think that definitely helped. Um, I always tell people like whenever they ask like, oh, how do you get famous online? Um, I think it's all about just like building up audiences from different projects over the years like like people who like a thing that you create will go on to like support the next thing that you create even though some other people might not like that and then like it just keeps building and building and building um and that process takes like many years um but yeah it, it definitely does help um so i think like a lot of my my audience like really like that and then it got shared around and then new people saw it and then it it escaped twitter and got posted on other websites and then it got really popular on those other websites too um so clearly uh people really wanted to see this happen and uh one person from from one of those websites uh his name is arnold and he's currently uh one of the members of scum house he reached out to me and he was like hey uh, I saw this. I saw this posted on another website. Like, I I really think this is a cool idea, and I uh, was wondering if you had any plans to make this into like a cartoon series or something like that. Because I am uh, in the process of like trying to create an indie animation studio, um, and I have other people who could help you. And I was like, uh, yeah, that sounds awesome. Because wow. <laughs> I I didn't have any like any people to like help me make this, and. Um, uh i wanted it to be a cartoon series um i was more uh comfortable in the world of comics at the time uh that was like easier uh and more like uh you know accessible for me um yeah but i really saw it as a cartoon series uh rather than a comic and i wanted to take him up on that so he got me introduced he, he introduced me to uh his friend shaggy um who he was trying to 
make the animation studio with and we got talking and we were talking about like all these ideas and and like the logistics of like making this happen and uh it was really cool it was really cool to be introduced to people who um who were who were trying to do that it was it was kind of like a i don't know like a little like <laughs> like a, a scrappy little animation studio and they were like reaching out to me um i mean that's incredible and, though. like it, yeah yeah i mean okay so question because you know if a traditional studio comes to you and says uh, you know i want to turn this show into idea you know there's contracts involved there's lawyers involved there's mm. rights involved there's pay exactly. etc did you have to consider like things like rights and ownership and and things when you when you signed on or well, i don't even know if you signed on but you agreed because <laughs> yeah no it was still, you were still in school right I was still in school. Yeah, I was a I was a sophomore uh, in college, so I was pretty young. I was think I was like nineteen or twenty at the time, um, and I didn't. It was very unofficial. Uh, like there was no like they didn't have an LLC or anything. They were just a group of guys <laughs> trying to make stuff, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't have to sign anything. Like I didn't. Uh, I didn't like forego any rights. We were just kind of talking about like how we would split up the work and who would do what and like. Shaggy came up with a lot of ideas because he's a he was formally trained as a writer so he he's very knowledgeable about like story structure and like script structure and stuff like that which is something that I didn't really have a lot of knowledge about so that's what he brought to the table and I was like I was like yeah no this is we can actually make this happen like I I started to realize that uh like multiple people with multiple different backgrounds and skill sets are required to make an animation like you can't just it's not just something that you can do like all on your own there's so much that goes into it that is like beyond your scope of like of your ability sometimes and i learned that like that's and that's very apparent uh when you compare glass of water which was my solo film to episode one like you can just see like the absolute wild difference <laughs> between like me just doing everything on my own and like me bringing on people who knew how to edit, knew how to do backgrounds, knew how to do voice acting. Um, it's it was just like night and day. Um, Did you have to like give up anything in your like the saying I guess in writing is like is, maybe that's not the right saying. Kill your darling, <laughs> but kill your darlings. You have, like, um, because you were joining a group of people who all had different talents, did you have to kind of give yeah. up some of your creativity and and come to terms with like things wouldn't be exactly how you wanted it? Um, no, I I never thought I never felt that way at all because it was just like very they're they're very friendly. They weren't like you know studio executives trying to screw me over. Um, but they did have different ideas to what I originally you know conceptualized for Satina, and I didn't see those as like oh no that's different to mine and, and I guess I have to do this now I've I always thought of it as more of like a collaboration like ultimately it was my show idea so I got the final say on like like creative decisions and like world building and and, and stuff like that even even though like uh you know some someone else might suggest something like I I was like totally free to turn it down if I wanted to yeah. um and that's and that's an agreement that we still hold to this day like no matter what we work on like the whoever whoever show we're working on they the creator has the final say on what gets approved and what doesn't i mean that sounds so, awesome um yeah yeah so you create episode one where you finish school i guess <laughs> you finish the yeah uh so i i didn't finish school <laughs> it's right. the funny thing Love um it. i actually dropped out uh during 2020 so um i yeah i, I 2020 <laughs> <laughs> I, I also completed... dropped out during 2020. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I think a lot of people did <laughs> um, for good reason. But yeah, no, so uh, I, I completed sophomore year. I was in junior year um, and, you know, I was like doing doing all the things that I that I was supposed to be doing in school. And then when COVID happened um, and Arnold was visiting me actually uh, in March of 2020, like right when the, the state shutdowns were happening and he he and his roommate were uh, uh, coming from New York and uh, they were just like, we were just like visiting to, to hang out with each other because we had done that like another time before last year. Um, so they, they made the road trip up to Massachusetts to see me and then we were like, oh my God, the world is on fire. Everything's shutting down. <laughs> what do we do? Um, and at the time, uh, my apartment didn't allow overnight guests. So <laughs> I made the decision to go back with them and wow. and just like kind of stay with them and and uh i brought my computer i brought my tablet and i i i went on a road trip with them 
to New York and I stayed there for like two months, I think, <laughs> while uh, the pandemic happened and it was in full effect. So I kind of like quarantined with them and we finished Satina in April of 2020. So we, that if, if COVID hadn't happened, I don't think we would have finished it to the extent that we did because I also made the decision to, to, I was, I was, I was thinking about things and I was like, man, I just made like an episode of a, of a, of a web series. And it's like, finding i i'm finding success with this and it's getting views and i'm getting paid for it through youtube i don't know if school is necessary for me because like <laughs> it's kind of getting in the way of me like furthering my career you know so i made the decision to drop out and it was a very good decision in the long run <laughs> um do i, I do not regret that at all do you have any regrets? no no i i don't think so um i think the only regret i have is like it would be nice to have my degree, but it's also insanely expensive. It would have been like twenty five thousand more dollars to add to my student loans. So I, I'm very glad I don't have to pay that extra extra bit. Um, I do have to pay a lot, but like any, any little like discount off of it helps immensely. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. I feel the same. The only thing I kind of regret is I, I like didn't get to see my classmates anymore and they were still like, yeah, doing stuff together for two more years. And I just felt like I, uh, I missed out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't feel like I missed out because, uh, I, because classes were all online and we couldn't even see each other anyway. Yeah, right. Um, and I, and I would have lived in the area still, so I wouldn't have like, you know, left anybody. Fair, fair, um, fair, fair. So, yeah. okay. so it's a, the, the circumstances lined up. Yeah. What's up? So, what's up? Everything. <laughs> Everything. So, you go in quarantine and finish the Tina. You you drop mm -hmm. it online and like instant hit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was a pretty big hit. Like, I think it like, got a million views in a in a week or something. Yeah, crazy. Did you do anything to manufacture yeah. that? Were you like, listen, the four of us worked so hard on this, we have to like push it out there in every way possible and like get our <laughs> and, like talk to all our contacts, or you just like blindly put it up on YouTube and said like, hey, we made this thing. Bye. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, we, we basically, we literally just did the ladder. We were right. just like, cause, cause none of us are marketers or like, you know, like, like media gurus or anything. We just kind of like our, our policy is just like, Hey, we're going to upload a thing. And then we, we post a tweet about it and then we upload a thing and then we don't look at it for like a month. And then... <laughs> so you, a month later you log into your YouTube and you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I mean, it, yeah. why do you think it has been so successful? Because there are tons of people uploading their personal shorts and stuff they made with other people all the time to mm. YouTube and whatnot. And like, you know, do, trying to do the Kickstarter route, trying to do the short film route, etc. Like, why do you think Satina kind of like cut through and got shared and people loved it and etc.? Um, I feel like it's just a concept that was very endearing to people and people wanted to see more of it. Like, I, I think the like intrinsically, like, uh, the demon queen of hell meeting a human man, falling in love with him, having a kid, and the kid is like half demon, half human. Um, I think that's like an, a dynamic that like intrinsically begs more questions and like wants, like, you know, invites people to like find out more about it because it's like oh how did the, the big question is like oh how did they meet how did what led up to that happening um and i think that is the driving force behind it it's just like and and i, I think also the, the the character designs i think satine is kind of like appealing she's got like round very simple shapes um and i think i think she's kind of cute so uh <laughs> yeah and and then also like hell is like a popular concept too because like you can it's like uh it, it's it's like it's like a vague enough concept that you can kind of like take it and run with it and like add your own creative spin on it like oh what if what if hell was this way or like you know it's like it's like a basis for like uh building more of your own like personal lore so totally, i think totally that's what makes what makes yeah, it for, so interesting to people for me it's like a super fresh idea it's already it's a little edgy like etc <laughs> think yeah that you um like okay so it start it sounds like this this popularity of this concept started from the, the concept art you posted on twitter where it just took off and people were loving etc were you posting mm. stuff like that all the time and this one just happened to take off and then you're like wow people like this idea i'm gonna run with it <laughs> uh yeah basically uh i i just like post a lot of like silly doodles to twitter um just because like i i draw something and i think i post it because i think people will like it and then that one just kind of 
it was it was just one of those things that people latched on to so i was like oh people there's an audience for those people want to see more of those so i'll i'll, I'll give them more <laughs> I mean, i've heard this a lot from creators because you know there's there's one path where it's like i'm gonna put my all and create the lord of the rings bible for mm. my uh like world and blah 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 and then you put it up and nobody connects with it and then like yeah yeah I was, I was on reddit today and somebody said they they had written 500 episodes for their series and they're looking for an animator to, <gasps> to animate i was like do people oh my god like, <laughs> like you spent all this That's time insane. and effort and you haven't even you haven't even vetted it with anything yet so like yeah be the next big series but at the same time it's like you know it maybe it doesn't connect and it goes nowhere so yeah. But I hear a lot from creators that end up with like, you know, things that have been massively, massively well received online where they were just posting and posting and something took off and then they, they went, oh, you know what, people like this, I'm going to run with it. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, I think the trick to getting people connected to your idea is just kind of like, to not overload them with information, just kind of like drip feed stuff that's like, that's, that's, that may or may not be coming in the future. Uh, like if you if you just kind of like put your stuff out there and you're like oh, okay this is my like cyberpunk like steampunk world with like 1500 characters and like 27 demigods and and like this is this is a, a there, there's like complex social hierarchies and like all this stuff it's it's really cool like you put you clearly put a lot of effort into it but like you can't just start with that off the bat like you have to kind of like start with like a very simple concept that people like more people will latch onto it uh you know uh like it because it's because it's intriguing and they want to know more like like less is better less is more i think um mm -hmm. and that's why it's important also to like if you're making a pilot to start with a like don't start with the origin episode that's that's something i learned from shaggy because <laughs> he, he he was like he, he told me that right off the bat when when we were making episode one like don't start with an origin episode i know i know everyone mm -hmm. wants that one i know everyone wants to like know how lucy and dave met but like you have to kind of like set the status quo with the first episode and like set up for set up the series for like what you know give give people a taste of what it's going to be and like what 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 occurs regularly in an episode and then just like kind of like slowly build up to that that part that they want that makes total sense uh yeah because like you know when you think about like sitcom world or whatever you just know the dynamic already it's not mm. like yeah it's not like you need to know how the simpsons like Marge and Homer met it's just like <laughs> have a dynamic. yeah like you can yeah yeah you, you don't need to see Seinfeld like purchasing his uh his apartment and like like contacting yeah. a realtor and like you know <laughs> like meeting Kramer and like I don't know I don't know whatever else um Basically. it's like you know the, you you know intrinsically that these people are friends and you know they you you show their dynamics through like depicting their like a day in their life um, makes total sense just, i'm actually gonna take yeah. this advice because like i've written a pilot and it is a it is an origin episode it's for a show i've been pitching around to the, the network yeah um it is an origin episode because literally every question i get is like well how does this happen how does this? so i'm like all right let me just <laughs> but uh yeah it yeah was, it was tough because like it's what happens in this series is like there's two main characters as a boy and a girl and they like mm -hmm. one is like living in this like crazy and sterile robotic environment the other one is like out in nature and they meet, but in the pilot, like in the in the origin episode, they're not together right away. So it's like I have to I have to create all this plot just to like get them together. <laughs> and then finally yeah, yeah. when you explore their dynamic, you're like three quarters of the way through that episode already. So it doesn't <laughs> yeah, even, yeah. It doesn't make sense. So this is okay, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I th I think it's really good advice just for for anyone out there because I think a lot of people are like you know it, it's it's so understandable like they're so excited to just like tell you about their their world and their characters and like how everything came to be but people need to like be interested in it first like you can't just like right. assume that people are going to be immediately invested so you have to like make them invested <laughs> uh and kind of like lead them to the to the way that you want them to go so so pandemic sucks you just spent two months <laughs> in a hot house creating satina <laughs> episode one yeah yeah you log into youtube a month later and realize you're youtube famous and rich <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, yeah it, but not, maybe not rich but like you know making enough money that you decide that this is a path you want to take yeah what did you so you you just decided not to go to school and just do 18 and a full time after that like you know because start a kickstarter a patreon like you know it's like you said you're not a marketer but mm -hmm yeah no i do have a patreon um i started the patreon actually before i think before episode 
like even glass of water came out or maybe maybe after glass of water came out yeah no i think it was after glass of water um so it was after the student film like everyone had like a, a concept of satina um they were if they were invested and wanted to know more they could donate to the patreon and then after that the patreon started to like you know gain gain patrons um gain interest uh and for a while i kind of like went overboard on the patreon because i was like adding way too many tiers i was adding like you know if you donate like ten dollars a month i'll give you like a sketch request or like i'll i'll you know i'll do this and this and this i'll give i'll mail you a button and that ended up like that as time went on that that ended up being too much for me to handle because it was taking away from actually making the show <laughs> so that's why i don't really like our patreon subscribers during the time though um i feel like people were more engaged um uh, like the the community was more active like i i, I had like a discord server or i still i still do have a discord server um and there were like you know i would regularly interact with them and i would like you know uh take polls for like what i should draw for like a monthly drawing um for for all the patrons who subscribe to like a certain tier level um but i realized one, once i realized that i was like I, that was too much for me to handle um i kind of like scaled back and i was like okay if you donate one dollar you'll get the discord server if you get if you donate five dollars you'll see behind the scenes and then anything else after that is just like up to your own like uh you know it how it's it's like donate whatever you want um and I think I also have a tier that's like $100 or $300 where I like I can like put you as a background character in an episode. Okay. <laughs> and a few people have donated to that one. Um that's that's okay. like the most involved one that I have so far. And uh that's that's still like in effect. Um but I I just got rid of all the other tiers and I and I realized that when I did that nobody complained, nobody uh like nobody was mad at me, nobody was like, "Oh no, you never post anything anymore." It was just like people because like at the end of the day people just want to support you like they don't really care and any any other like prize that they get for donating is like superfluous it's not it's not it's kind of different uh, than a kickstarter campaign because kickstarter is like incentivizes you like right away with like a one-time donation um but like for a monthly donation it's like a subscription um and everyone's like fully aware that like it just goes to supporting the show totally um and yeah. everyone's yeah everyone's yeah. super super nice Oh, sorry. Yeah, well, that's, oh, that's okay. Yeah. Right. Do you have an idea of the demographic of your Patreons? Um, like, are they I... are they animation people? Are they lay people? <laughs> <Because that's... laughs> um, I think they're all just like people who like indie animation. Um, they're like okay. weird nerds. People who they're they're like there there are some animators and artists, uh, for sure. But I think most of them are just like, oh yeah, no, I like to watch YouTube videos. I like to watch animation on YouTube um and i like your stuff cool. so yeah it, it's it's a it's a a big mix of people but um they're all very supportive and, and nice um at, at least the people in the discord server so i know i know it hasn't been too long since you i guess quit school published episode one but you already have a couple other episodes and i'm assuming you're working on more episodes so like yeah full-time thing for you in scum house now no it's not a full-time thing um and the reason for that is uh that the income from YouTube and from Patreon and from our merch store and, and, and the like is very inconsistent, unfortunately. That's the reality of the situation is uh, if you do animation on YouTube and you only upload videos, like, you know, if, if you do them at the pace that we do them, which is like hand-drawn frame-by-frame animation, like, you know, hand-drawn lighting like we don't we don't do any rigs or like any shortcuts or anything like that just because we like the way it looks <laughs> and we like doing it um but because of the way that we animate um it takes a long 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 time and we can't upload consistently like we can't consistently upload like 15 minute episodes every month or every week every like two months even um and we're, we try to remedy that by uh you know making shorts and every now and then like fun little like very short videos uh, yeah. But even those take a long time to to make too. Uh, but yeah, the, because because our upload schedule is inconsistent, um, we don't see consistent income, and we also have to split it among the four of us. Uh, we right. split it evenly. Um, so that that uh, it's it's not sustainable very much. Um, it's nice like side income, but uh, I think that. Uh, we we had we do have to supplement our income with like day jobs and, and and stuff like that and i also like 
I don't want to do Satina like every waking moment of my life. Um, I like to, I, I, I do, <laughs> I like to do a variety of things. Like I, I love, I love making Satina and I love, I love creating, I love creating cartoons with my friends. Um, but I also, uh, you know, I, I, I also uh, am an animator on Smiling Friends for Adult Swim. And I, I, um, I also make and sell my own comics too. So I, I like to do a little bit of everything. Um, and it's just, it just keeps me happy being able to do that. So what um, do you, it's also like what do you, more supplemental income. What do you consider your like job then? Because you're part of this collective. Yeah. And yeah. you're also a freelance on your own. Mm -hmm. And you're also a professional animator on Smiling Friends. Yeah, um, I'd say all of those are my job. Okay. <laughs> it's sure. it's a nightmare trying to trying to like apply for like loans or like apartments because I have to like I have to put like five or six different income sources and and like none of them sound like a real job. Like oh, yeah, right. I pictures on the internet and I make like sometimes I make three thousand dollars a month. Sometimes I make ten thousand dollars a week. It's you know who knows. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so it's like it's it's a crazy chaotic way to live, but um, it's I, I try to find I try to find balance and and like security wherever I can. So, so what would stop you from saying to Scumhouse like, listen, there's four of us. Why don't we like uh, professionalize our studio a little bit more and like mm -hmm. look for uh, you know consistent work that that brings in house work, I guess. Yeah, uh, we we do try to do that. Uh, like we we've done a few like commission jobs for for a few people over the years. Um, but it's, it's it is hard to coordinate that stuff because we like we live all in different locations except for me and Arnold. Me and Arnold are roommates now. Um, but Lars is in Nevada and Shaggy's in Canada, and we don't have an in person like location. Um, I guess it would be easier to coordinate that stuff if we were all like if we had like a studio um but as of now like we just have like other uh other needs that we have to we have to tend to and those take priority sometimes um but yeah we do we do uh kind of like look around and, and look for look for work whenever, wherever we can it's just a yeah we, we we also do other things on the side too okay that makes sense i'm curious how did yeah. you okay so how did you end up in Smiling Friends? Because, uh, you know, there's a lot of animators who finished degrees and got internships and blah, 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 blah. Mm. How, did you, how did you end up getting that role? Um, so I think it's a few different things. Um, one of them is that, uh, so the the voice actor for Dave, uh, Hans Van Harken, he's a wonderful man, lovely guy. He's, he's perfect as Dave. Um, he's very fun to work with. Um, he knew Zach Hadel personally. Um, and when we were making uh, episode one of Satina, uh, he was like recording with us and he just kind of like, uh, we, we were like, oh yeah, we need like a, a, a voice for this, uh, this, this guy who gets his soul sucked out at the end of the episode. And we, <laughs> we were just like, oh yeah, it'd be funny to have like Zach Hadel do it. Like, cause you know, he he's known for his his grotesque screaming yeah. and hans is like oh he's my roommate i can ask him right now and we were like what oh my okay. gosh <laughs> and uh uh zach is like <clears throat> wonderful gracious man and he agreed to do it he he just did it for free because he's he's amazing wow. and um he he just screamed into the microphone for us <laughs> and um i think I think that's how he kind of like I kind of like got on his radar because uh, we never like interacted directly. But uh, I was like, um, I would I messaged him uh, every now and then, uh, like after after episode one came out, I did like the him on Twitter. And I was like, hey, thank you so much for like screaming for my cartoon. And he was like, I, I was like, I hope you remember me. Like, <laughs> um, and he was like, yeah, no, of course I remember you. Satina is awesome. Like, congr congratulations. Um, so like, yeah, he was, uh, he was really cool. And, um, he put out a call for work for Smiling Friends, like, uh, later that year, I think it was like 2021. Um, and it was, it was just like a Twitter post. Like, he was just like, we're looking for animators for Smiling Friends. Um, if you want to apply, like email this person. I was like, oh, should I apply? I kind of like, I really want to do this. This is like a dream job for me. Cause like Zach was an inspiration for me for many years. I, I used to watch his videos all the time when I was a teenager. I'd like listen to his podcast and it, it he is a massive creative inspiration for me. Um so I 
I I saw the Smiling Friends uh, pilot when it came out in in 2020, and I, I fell in love with it. I was like, oh my god, I would love to work on the show. Like, <laughs> but I, like that's ever gonna happen. And <laughs> and then I literally just like I I saw the call for work, and I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna get in, but I, I might as well try. And um, I think I I like sent in my reel. I sent in my application. And uh, one of the producers for Smiling Friends got back to me and they're like, hey, we want to offer you a job. Zach and Michael love your work. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, yay. <laughs> That's awesome. It was, it was, it was awesome. It was, it was really, really cool. Um, and it was like, it, it was, I literally like, I, I feel so lucky because I literally got my dream industry job like right off the bat. Um, and I'm still working on it to this day. I'm working on season two and it's it's been mm -hmm. wonderful. I love doing it. Um, and it's it's a... It's it's good it's good to have different skill sets because uh, it's like it's a, it's a different way of animating um, and it's a different program than Satina so uh, working multiple jobs like that uh, with like different character designs and different like pipeline productions has been very helpful uh, in like informing my work on Satina too because I I learn new new animation skills I learn new like program skills um, I learn a little bit about like how uh like a big studio pipeline works um so i've i've taken that knowledge and i've i've uh, brought it into safety and it's and it's like much better for it that makes total sense i'm curious what's the weirdest character you animated on smiling <laughs> um i i don't know if you've seen um the the episode who murdered who murdered simon as salty um i animated the sexy mustard the, oh the mustard blowjob scene <laughs> Well, <laughs> when uh, Perry Caravello is like on the couch and the mustard's like blowing him uh, and like sticking her leg up, that was me. And I, I was like, I, I, I took great pleasure in animating that. I was like, yeah, I can tell my mom that I animated this. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what it, if if that was like in the script. I don't know where I'd start. Do I shoot a reference video first? Do I? <laughs> Like go ahead and buy some well, I had to I had to animate over like the PNG sequence of of Perry, um, and it was it was really weird. But I I just, I just oh did my, my best. Goodness. They were like, yeah, no, you should make mustard like go down on him. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this is yeah, the highlight cool. of my career. That show has like so many like different styles and like even just like frame yeah. rate. It's it's like crazy. Like I've yeah. gone through uh, like once a clip gets uploaded on YouTube, I like go through frame by frame and be like, how did they? How did they get their grandma to suck the lollipop in hell? Like, so crazy. Like, <laughs> it's all about using very few frames on ones. So it's like a very, very, very fast motion. <laughs> and that's what makes it really funny. Um, that's that's also something that's like a little like tip that I that I took into Satina. Not not that I like copied that directly, but I was like, okay, this is this is how you do this. This is how you get this motion to look this this like insane. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um uh, somebody, uh, a creator screaming into a mic for your show led to uh, like a, such a <laughs> great dream job for you to draw mustard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think it was it was that, and also like I think I think like just Satina being ex as successful as it was helped too because they were kind of like already like privy to my work, and like they they kind of like like having an episode, a fully completed episode of a of a series on YouTube is like. A demonstration of of what you can do as an animator so i think like that has also like helped me a lot with getting jobs too totally so, and and okay yeah. so for like smiling friends for instance when you're animating you're not doing any of the storytelling like it's all locked in at that point correct so like yeah 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 because, that's right. like uh, i was just an animator so i was just tasked with like I, I i would get a storyboard that someone already did and i would get like vague notes or like like acting notes or whatever and i would just like do my best um but when you to, put together to like a to reel life. to send to other people you're putting together like shots that you worked on say tina that you think are like like good acting shots or like weight shots or something like that yeah definitely yeah i i have a variety of things on my reel like i i'll have like rough shots that i did i'll have cleanup shots i'll have like uh retakes that i did or like like edited shots like that someone else did um and I, I think it's important to have a variety of like animation skill sets on your reel. I think that's very, very important. Um, it'll, it'll get you more jobs um, and it'll, it'll like display like the, the different things that you can do. Like if you, if you can just do rough animation, you should like try to expand and like display what else you can do too. That makes total sense. So you, yeah. you have your hands or feet, whatever the saying is dipped into different <laughs> I don't know what they're saying. Pools, maybe, but like, yeah, yeah. For instance, you could go hard on Satina and Patreon and shop, 
And like you said, mm -hmm. money hasn't been consistent there, but like, I, I suppose you could go super hard there or you could go could, super yeah. hard on the professional route. Do you have like yeah. a, like, do you foresee yourself like becoming more of the professional, like TV drawn animation doing Satina as like a hobby? Or do you see like yourself, like using all, everything you're learning professional animation to like take Satina and like, I don't know, like, I guess the next step would be to to try to sell it to a network or something and then be a show. Yeah, rep. yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I try not to plan things out too much. Uh, just because I like I like living in the moment I live I live day to day. Um, that that might be a chaotic way to live. But that's that's how I that's how I choose to live at the moment. Um, so right now, I'm pretty content with what I'm doing. I'm, I'm content with like doing doing like both at the same time um like I, I prioritize things where where they need to be prioritized like right now i'm uh smiling friends is like uh nearing a close on production so i'm like i have to focus on that pretty much full time uh but once once that's over with um i i i re-switch my focus back to satina and we try to keep satina like running in the background while i'm busy with that that stuff like we we've hired animators and we've uh train them and and made style guides and like and and we give them notes every time they upload shots so it is still being worked on it's not like Satina stops running in like completely if if i step away but i'm i'm very grateful that i do get to like step away and like it production still running smoothly thanks to shaggy and arnold and lars um so yeah yes. it's uh right now i am I, I'm not sure where Satina is going to go right now. I'm very happy with it just being on YouTube. Um, I'd say that I do, I could get the opportunity to like shop it around. I think I have like the, uh, the, the clout, so to speak, to do that. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, it's, it is a personal choice to just keep it on YouTube just because um, I, I like the creative freedom it brings and I like the, like the audience participation of it. Like I like, um, I like, I like, uploading a video and seeing seeing people's comments and like seeing firsthand like the fan art and the and the reactions to it and and all that stuff and i think that's very like that's that's something that you can you can witness firsthand and like be closer to if you're producing something independently i mean that's um, awesome i'm curious yeah yeah you mentioned you know there's four people at at scum house including yourself working on this then you hire other people too so does say yeah make enough to hire all these people or is it kind of like you're spending your free time trying to try to make this happen because it's more of a like i don't know just the goal is to like keep keep doing it i guess uh yeah no so we we have a very uh like we have a we have a patreon budget right now um that's like purely from patreon we get we the way it works is we get paid through youtube and and merch stores and and, and whatnot and all the money that we make on Patreon, all of it goes towards uh, like hiring people for Satina and also like paying ourselves uh, like a, a wage for for working on it each month. Makes sense. Um, so yeah, so we we have uh, a, quite a bit of budget, not not like too much. Um, right. <laughs> obviously, it's not like a yeah. you know two million or anything like that. that. People are making it happen. Yeah exactly exactly so like new money comes in each month um and then we use that to like hire people and hire voice actors background artists storyboards storyboarders and stuff like that um because uh lars is our main background artist um but sometimes we'll need to like bring other people on to to help him do a bunch of backgrounds if if uh, the episode we're working on requires requires more than he can just do by himself um, and Arnold is usually the storyboarder and the uh, animation director, um, but we also bring in other people to like collaborate with storyboards. Um, just just because it's like, I I like I also like bringing in new people just because it's like it's it's a fresh new vision from like what we usually do because sometimes the the stuff that we do gets a little bit like not not repetitive but it's it's yeah, uh, no, it totally like sense. we're we're limited by our own you know like. Yeah. <laughs> our own brands or yeah and personalities. it's been working yeah. so far but it, it's a good idea to bring fresh faces and perspectives it totally makes sense absolutely yeah yeah what would um, what would yeah. happen, what would happen if you are just posting something again to twitter and it takes off and you see it on tumblr and reddit etc <laughs> start another a totally different series um, I feel Where? like, yeah, I, f I feel like that would be talked about. Um, like, obviously, we would we would prioritize Satina first. 
but I feel like if something else that I that I drew got popular, I feel like we could like be like, oh yeah, no, let's turn this into a show. Let's 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 like do something with this. Yeah. Um, it'll it'll That's just like depend on what what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's it's a yeah. It, that's a conversation that that uh, that we'll have have in the future if that ever comes up. But yeah, n n right now I'm just I'm content just like posting silly doodles, and if people like them, that's that's wonderful. I guess just the way social media is working, I'm just curious. Um, have you noticed like a slower growth of followers, or a, a drop off of followers, or like it's harder to get new followers or whatnot? Because you also you said you're not posting like every week obviously so and there's mm. like big periods of time between episodes so have you noticed that the like newer episodes don't get as much attention or it's harder to like get the more amount of views or something um i a little bit um i think we kind of like in the beginning we were we were very focused on like Oh, you know, we have to we have to like promote our stuff. We have to we have to like be active on the YouTube community tab and like post posts whatever to to Twitter. Um and I think we've just kind of like given up on that aspect. Like we don't want to be YouTubers. <laughs> we really really don't. We just want to be people who make cartoons who happen to upload them to YouTube for people to enjoy. So, um you know, I don't I don't really keep track of like my followers or like my 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 view counts that much. Um view counts sometimes cuz cuz it does impact like, you know, our our income. So we just like keep an eye on it just to uh, like project how much we're going to make that month. But as for followers, I'm not really too concerned about that. Um I think that people like the stuff that I make and if they like it enough they'll they'll keep uh like, you know, they'll 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 keep tuning in. Um, even if I don't post like as regularly as I, as I quote unquote should, like, I don't, th I don't think any, any, like, <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think any sort of like any amount of social media management is like super integral to like the success of a show. I think the show should just stand by itself. Um, that makes total sense. Like, I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like people are too preoccupied with that stuff sometimes. And it kind of like, hinders them or, or it makes them question why their shows aren't getting success even though they're like obsessively like managing their social media and like doing promotional stuff for it um i think i think you should just the, the focus first and foremost should just be on making the show really good and that should that should stand on its own that makes total sense plus you've already got like the hardcore fans who are your patreon subscribers so yeah exactly yeah and they're they're super appreciative and understanding every time i like i i don't um if if there's like a lot of silence if i get super busy they're they're like oh yeah no take your time we're, we're excited to see satina <laughs> and i'm so 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 grateful for people like that like seriously i can't i can't thank my patrons enough like they're they're so awesome <laughs> that's awesome how does yeah just i guess maybe my last question roll it back to before you even went to animation school why did why did you and comic books and everything like you know what what made you pursue doing all these creative things with your life from the start? Um, I guess I watched cartoons as a kid and I, I really liked them. And <laughs> um, I was encouraged to draw a lot um, when I was growing up, which is like amazing. Um, a lot of people can't really say that. Like they, they're they like constantly told that like art isn't a career or like, you know, you, you're wasting your time if you if you draw all day. Uh, but my mom was always like, "Oh yeah, you know, you you're so talented. You're you're you you can draw so well. Like I'm, you're so amazing. You should you, like if you want to do this as a career, you should do it. Like I'll I'll wow. support you." Um, so it was it was awesome. Like that that supportive environment really like told me like ev everyone told me that I was like good at drawing. So I was just kind of like, "Oh yeah, I guess this is what I was meant to do." <laughs> um, I I always knew that I wanted a career in art, but that art was just kind of like an abstract concept for me for a long time that I didn't really like ascribe any sort of career to. I just knew that I liked to do it and that there were people that did it for money. Um, and then when I got older, uh, I started to like, I, I was like, oh yeah, okay. I, I wanna work in animation. Like I wanna do something in animation. Um, and I, uh, and then I gravitated towards comics cause comics were kind of like, I, I feel like comics are a little bit animation adjacent uh, just because there's like, you know, comics and storyboards have some overlap. Uh, there's a lot of like planning that goes into them. There's like, you, you have to like produce appealing drawings, and you're and you're telling a story uh, at the end of the day. Um, so it was kind of like it was kind of like animation, but in a different like kind of more accessible way. Because I never really like 
had a, a big expensive animation program uh but i did have like drawing programs and i had you know obviously pencil and paper so i think i got started in comics first because it was more accessible to me that makes um, sense. and i th yeah and i i thought i was gonna do that like i was like oh wait no i, I really like comics i like a you know, like independent web comics and stuff like that. Um, so maybe I should do that. Um, and I, I still, I still love, I, I still love doing that, and I still want to like have a have a career in that as well. Like I, <laughs> I want to do all of these things, uh, but there's there's no time. Like the animation and comics are both like extremely time consuming. So I kind of like screwed myself over there. <laughs> I was I was thinking of asking you because like a lot of guests I talk to, you know, if they're working in the professional side of things they're longing yeah. to make their own stuff they're like you know in a couple of years or whatever when i've saved up enough i'm gonna make my own choice but you know you have best of both worlds so i was gonna ask you know, mm. what do you feel is missing if if there is something missing from your career right now is it, is it the comic wish <laughs> um i think so yeah i would i would really like to have more time i i think the the biggest thing missing is time because like i just don't have enough hours in the day right. to do all the things i, I want to do <laughs> yeah or like at least like didn't have to sleep because i would get an extra eight hours to do whatever um <laughs> but uh yeah no i i i really want to like when I, whenever i have free time I, I do work on comics and i i really really enjoy doing that and i want to i want to be able to like publish a graphic novel pretty soon i'm working i'm working on one right now oh nice um, yeah so it's it's just like something that i it's it's another thing that i that i would really like to do um and i think like i i don't want to just like sit around and be like oh no i wish i could do this you know i i want to actually just do it and i think that's like something that everyone should do you know you should just you, you you shouldn't have to like hope and dream and like you know wish yeah. that you that you could could make something like you, you should just make something <laughs> you know even if it's bad or if it's like not as a it doesn't have like a, a million dollar budget you should just make something just because you want to you want to like see it be put I mean, out I in the world just make something it's it's yeah 100 i love that your answer was like if i didn't have to sleep i could work i could work eight hours more a day <laughs> yeah yeah sometimes uh, it's a uh, five hours more oh uh i haven't yeah <clears throat> sometimes i don't get much sleep but i i try to i try to take care of my body because my body Please is the do. animation Please machine do. yeah <laughs> uh well hannah you know you you've we've been through the whole story where you're at where you came from how you made things happen is there, is there anything you we didn't talk about that you wanted to share still um Any final words or whatnot even final words um I don't know. I think I think uh, just make something is a pretty good final message. Um, I, like I think I think that's really important. Um, just if if you want to make something, if you have an idea, don't wait until like someone says it's okay to make it. Just just do it. And if you feel like you're not at the skill level that you need to do that you need to be at to make it, you can get to that skill level to just like learn and grow and like you know draw and draw and draw and draw. Practice every day um find time for the things that you're passionate about like you have to physically like carve out time in your schedule even though it's like it seems it seems hard like i i've i've been learning that in recent years like just just to like i have to like force time to <laughs> to like to 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 do the things that i want to do like if i want to like hang out with friends or if i want to make a comic if i want to like i don't know make bake something <laughs> you know it's 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 so easy to just be like oh you know i don't have time but it's another oh there's a car outside <laughs> sorry um yeah no it's just like uh, just just making time for for yourself and finding joy in the things that you create is is very important and i think like <clears throat> that's something i've learned just... myself too it's like i always yeah. tell myself, like never underestimate what you can get done in 20 minutes because like 20 minutes, exactly you could yeah. just i don't know scroll instagram for 20 minutes or you could start that thing <laughs> you wanted to do and then two oh hours, my god and you're like well yes yes that's another thing that I've learned is that like social media is is brain rot. Like don't like it's it's so easy to just like you're you're sitting there. You have like ten minutes of free time. What are you gonna do? Go to Twitter? No. Like th that's your brain telling you like oh I need stimulation. This isn't. I'm gonna press the stimulation button. Yeah. <laughs> I've had to like I've had to like detox from from Twitter uh, and and social media because of that. Just because like I was I was I was not like filling my time with like anything substantial i was just wasting it like scrolling endlessly so Listen, i try to like right now yeah <laughs> yeah 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 I, I i try to i try to like watch i i try to learn things in yeah. in the spare time that i can because i love i love learning new things i love learning about history and like 
in, in the weird stuff. So I, wa I watch a lot of video essays while I work. <laughs> oh, uh, have you, I'm, I'm doing that right now too, actually. I, have you, nice. have you heard any good ones? <laughs> um yeah i'm really into uh kaz Rowe right now they're a youtuber they're like a, a a history youtuber and they do like very very extensive research on like niche topics in history usually like lgbt uh related like history things because a lot of that type of history is like uh has been like kind of suppressed over the yeah. years um yeah, but I, I it's it's really cool it's uh, their their youtube is very very informative and i i really like uh i really like the way they present information on like a really engaging way um, well, so yeah shout out shout out to kazro k-a-z-r-o-w-e cool, cool. uh, <laughs> yeah Sweet. all right hannah well super thank you for coming on it's been an absolute pleasure uh you know yeah. i've been watching satina from the start and it's pretty cool to finally talk to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you very much podcast it's, that i have <laughs> yeah it's so awesome to to be here uh thank you very very much i really, really appreciate it i hope this was a an informative interview <laughs> i hope you learned so things much. yeah and yeah. if you're listening and you want to reach out to hannah or follow her work or, or check out mm -hmm. obviously you can do so i'm gonna link up her youtube which is hannah daigle 8846 and her twitter twitter which is hey daigle and her instagram which is hannah, hannah daigle art and all those links will be in the description of this chat and that's all for now so thank you so much for listening okay bye <laughs> The music for this podcast was composed by Willem Mendo and the graphics by Luhan Wang. I encourage you to look them up if you've enjoyed their work.